My name is Joe. I am a scuba diver, free diver, and all around underwater explorer. I am not a gamer, but recently I found this amazing underwater diving game called Subnautica. In Subnautica, you play as an underwater explorer whose spaceship has crashed on an ocean covered planet. You must use your scuba diving skills and gear to survive and explore the planet's diverse ecosystem. The game really does make you feel like you're diving underwater, but as a real diver, I found some deadly mistakes with the game's portrayal of underwater exploration. Using my diving experience, I'm gonna show you what Subnautica got wrong and what it got right. Free diving. After crashing on planet 4546B, you were forced to explore the shallow waters around your life pod by diving down without any scuba tanks and holding your breath only. Free diving is the preferred method of diving with spear fishermen. It is also a professional sport with international competitions, and there is a lot of scientific research on how to free dive safely. In real life, if you tried free diving the way as portrayed in Subnautica, there is a very good chance you would die. In Subnautica, when you free dive down underwater, there is a countdown timer which shows you how much time you have left underwater before dying. When you resurface above the water, this so-called oxygen meter rapidly recharges in a matter of seconds and you are ready for another free dive. In real life, after a long breath hold dive, a free diver must come back to the surface and stay at the surface long enough to let their blood oxygen saturation level come back to 99%. This recovery period could be as long as five to 10 minutes depending on the health and experience of the free diver. If a free diver came up after a long breath hold dive and only took a few breaths at the surface, then went right back down for another long breath hold dive, there is a good chance that they would black out underwater and drown. For all these reasons, the breath hold diving in Subnautica is not realistic. The Pathfinder Tool. In Subnautica, you must venture through underwater cave systems as well as explore the wreckage of the crashed Aurora spaceship. Swimming through these tight spaces can be terrifying, especially when you are running out of air and cannot find the way back out. Fortunately, in the game, you are able to craft the Pathfinder tool to help you find your way back out of tight spaces. The Pathfinder tool allows you to place lighted markers around your route to help guide you back out to safety. In real life, cave divers or wreck divers do not use lights to mark their route, they use a line. The problem with underwater light markers is that they require the diver to be able to see them. Often in caves, there is silt which can be disturbed by the diver. If the cave gets silted out, the diver loses all visibility and must use his hands to follow the line back out of the cave. So in real life, the lighted markers of the Pathfinder tool would be useless if the cave or shipwreck got silted out. So the Pathfinder tool is not realistic for diving. The Sea Glide Scooter. The Sea Glide is one of my favorite pieces of diving equipment in Subnautica. It is a battery powered underwater scooter. You use it to move around underwater rapidly, which will increase your diving depth and range. The Sea Glide functions just like a real underwater scooter called a Sea Bob. The Sea Bob is battery powered and uses a powerful water jet to move the diver around underwater and also on the surface of the water. I recently tested a Sea Bob and it is very fast like the Sea Glide in Subnautica and it also has a very good battery life to it. The main difference on the Subnautica Sea Glide is the holographic sonar mapping feature. The Sea Bob only has a very basic dash display which shows speed and battery level, but overall I think the Subnautica Sea Glide is very realistic. The Surface Air Pump. In Subnautica, a portable surface supplied air pump can be used to pipe air down to the diver to keep him down deeper longer so that he can complete his task underwater. In real life, I use a system that is very similar to this. It's called the Sea Lion by Brownies. The Brownie Sea Lion is a battery powered air pump that floats at the surface and pumps air down to me at a max depth of 18 meters. The air pump in Subnautica is realistic when compared to the Brownie Sea Lion. The only main difference is that in real life, we use air hoses and not pipes. Hunting fish. 
In order to survive on planet 4546b, you must hunt fish for food. Thankfully, there are plenty of edible fish nearby and they are slow moving. You must hunt these fish using an underwater survival knife. In real life, freedivers use spear guns or pole spears to hunt fish. Most game fish will not allow a diver close enough to them to reach them with a knife. The diver must use a spear that is propelled by a thick rubber band to get the fish at a distance. It is not realistic that a diver with advanced technology would use just a knife to catch fish. If you want to see more amazing spearfishing, check out my friend Captain Jack Spiro's YouTube channel. He is one of the best free divers and spearfishers in the world. The Air Bladder Emergency Flotation. In Subnautica, while diving down to the ocean floor to look for resources, you must push yourself to your limits with airtime and then get back to the surface as quickly as possible. Fortunately, there is a tool to help you ascend to the surface quickly. The air bladder is a small inflatable balloon that can be deployed to get you back to the surface quickly without swimming. Some real life freedivers choose to use a freedive recovery vest. This vest can be triggered by hand or automatically when it senses that a freediver has been underwater for too long. The vest inflates an air pocket around the diver's neck and chest, which will bring them back to the surface facing up. If the freediver has blacked out, the vest will still keep their head above water and give them a chance to recover. The technology of the air bladder in Subnautica is realistic, but in real life, you would want the air pocket attached to a vest and not be handheld. The Seamoth Submarine. Some of the most valuable resources on planet 4546b are found hundreds of meters deep or in vast cave systems. Exploring these biomes require that you stay very deep for long periods of time. For this, you must use the Seamoth, a personal sized submarine that's capable of going to a depth of 900 meters. The Seamoth looks very similar to real submarines made by a company called Triton. Triton subs are built around a glass-like spherical structure that holds the sub pilot and passengers inside. Triton subs are very maneuverable and they're capable of diving down to depths over 1,000 meters deep. The Subnautica Seamoth sub is somewhat realistic because of its characteristics that resemble the Triton sub. What is unrealistic, however, is how you are able to go in and out of the Seamoth while you're very deep. Real subs like the Triton are designed to remain seal once you dive down deep underwater. Opening the hatch down deep would cause a rapid increase in cabin pressure and would most likely injure all the passengers and flood and destroy the submarine. Scuba diving gear. As you progress in the game, you will be required to dive deeper and longer, and breath holding will no longer give you enough bottom time to complete your tasks. You begin to craft compressed air tanks and eventually a rebreather system. But the way these tanks and rebreather system are used in the game would most certainly kill a real scuba diver. To begin with, the air tanks in Subnautica do not last nearly as long as real scuba tanks. The dive tanks in Subnautica though, have some way of rapidly recharging themselves once the diver gets back to the surface. Real life scuba tanks need to be taken to an air compressor and take a long time to fill back up. In Subnautica wall on scuba tanks, the diver is able to rapidly go up and down, changing depths far too quickly. In real life, scuba divers must go up slowly to give their body a chance to adjust to the changing pressure. While scuba diving down deep, the added pressure of the water forces excess nitrogen into the diver's bloodstream. If the diver was to go up too fast, the nitrogen would turn into bubbles within their blood and cause a life-threatening emergency called decompression sickness or the bends. For these very important reasons, the scuba diving gear and methods in Subnautica are not realistic at all. The dive light. Planet 4546b does have a day and night cycle, so you must be able to scuba dive in the dark. Also, when diving into the planet's caves or very deep depths, it gets very dark as well, and you must use a dive light. The dive light in Subnautica is very bright and has good battery longevity. It has a limited range and will only light up the area within the vicinity of the diver. The Subnautica flashlight resembles common dive lights used in real life and is very realistic. Diving depth. 
Part of the thrill of playing Subnautica is diving deeper and deeper into the ocean on planet 4546b. Your search for precious resources will take you over 1,000 meters deep. In real life, a submarine could take you that deep because the submarine keeps the inside of the hull at atmospheric pressure. But for a scuba diver to be exposed to that extreme depth and pressure, it would be a death sentence. In the real world, the air we breathe is made up of several gases like oxygen, nitrogen, CO2, and several others. At Earth's surface, this mix of gases is perfectly safe to breathe, but dive down to 30 meters and some of these gases can start to have very negative effects on the human body. At depth, nitrogen can have a numbing or euphoric effect, and oxygen that we need to live will become toxic. In real life, to overcome these effects, deep divers use a blend of different gases that could include hydrogen, neon, and helium. This type of diving is very dangerous and is only done by highly trained professional deep divers and still the max depth for this type of diving is 330 meters. So the 1000 meter scuba diving in Subnautica is wildly not realistic. Swimming technique. In Subnautica, the way the diver is seen swimming is not efficient and could even be dangerous. In the game, if you try and hold still, you can look at the shadow and you can see that the diver is still swimming with his arms and kicking with his fins. In real life, if a diver had to swim this hard to stay in place, it would mean that that diver is overweighted. In real life scuba diving or free diving, it is extremely important that the diver be properly weighted so that they are neutrally buoyant. Neutrally buoyant means that if you stop swimming, you're not gonna rise too fast and you're not gonna sink. You're gonna stay in place underwater. If the diver had to keep swimming just to stay in place, they would rapidly burn air and they could possibly even drown from exertion. To make matters even worse, the diver in Subnautica can constantly be seen swimming with his hands, which is inefficient. Real divers train to swim using only their legs because a human's legs is much more powerful than the arms, especially when equipped with swim fins. For these reasons, the swimming technique in Subnautica is not realistic for a trained diver. Write a comment and tell me what you would change about Subnautica after seeing this video. And also if you would like to see me explore more into the vast ocean of planet 4546b. Drop a like on the video and please consider subscribing if you like real life underwater exploration. Thanks again guys, now get out there and explore.